Hey, my name is Guy Athena and in this video I'm bringing you part 5 of my September wrap up. Now, th the next books I'm going to talk about is a 10 book manga series. Um, and I may have them in the wrong order. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I have them in the right order for me, but I don't know how that like comes across on camera because I find that difficult to figure out. Um, so basically, I read I read all ten volumes of The Disappearance of Nagato Yuki-chan by Puyo Nagaru Tanigawa and Noisy Ito. This is the spin-off series from the Melancholy of Haru Suzumiya. Uh, now, a while ago, we watched the movie of that. We rewatched some of the episodes of the TV series. Um, my boyfriend um, read all ten of these, so then I felt in the mood to do that too. I had previously read volumes one through six, and I think I may have read the first few volumes three times because then every time when we got like a one or two new volumes we read the whole thing up to there sort of thing uh, but anyway so volumes one through six were rereads for me and then seven through ten were new to me so i'll show you the covers um, while i talk about it so this uh series um like i said is a spin-off of haru suzumiya now, in Haru Suzumiya, uh, you have um, Kion, who is a high school student, and then you have Haru Suzumiya. She is a, a, a kind of a different girl, and she likes to believe in things like aliens, espos, and time travelers. And so, in the main series, she makes these things come true. And so the friends that they surround themselves with are a time travel lady in Esper, um, if that makes sense. But in this series, it's about what if the characters were, let's say, just ordinary humans being high school students. If that, that's, that's sort of like it. I mean, not quite, but you know, after, that's a very basic premise. Um, so yeah. So most of these were rereads for me and then there was four new ones. Um, it was really nice to read all of them and, and finally know the whole story. I'm going to show you some of the art if I can. And yeah, I really enjoyed reading this series. Um, I liked some volumes more than others. Um, just some things happen more in, in the, the plot and the characters move forward more in some of the volumes than in others. Um, but, um, like, in, in some volumes the characters were just having, um, like, fun in the summer, if that makes sense. Um, which are actually some references to the original series, um, in which similar but also not quite similar things happen, if that makes sense. I, I like that there were references to the original series. I haven't read the original manga, but I have seen the original TV show, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Uh, the next book um, I finished was a buddy read, and that is Fablehaven Book 2, Rise of the Evening Star. I buddy read this book from Linda, from Linda's World of Books, and I will leave a link to her channel uh, down below in the description. Now, this is book 2 in the Fablehaven series. Uh, Linda and I read book one in August um, and we both really liked it. Um, so I can't really give you the synopsis for this book too much, but this was a really nice read. Uh, it's, I would say, middle grade fantasy. The only thing was that at the end, or like just before the end, things seemed to be wrapped up a bit quickly and there was a couple of Things that happen that I would call, you know, a little bit deus ex machina, if that term means anything to you. So, like, the, yeah, like, not quite the end, but just a bit before the end, like how some of the plot threads wrapped up and stuff. It seemed a bit convenient, if that makes sense. Um, but other than that, I, I, I mostly really enjoyed this book. 
However, we got to see a lot of the characters that we met in the first book and it ended on a bit of a twist so I look forward to see what's gonna happen in book three. Yeah. Oh, this is Barbandon Mall. I don't think I said that. Oops. <laughs> then I read, or finished, I should say, The Black Flamingo by, uh, by Dean Atta. This is a book written in verse. Um, and it is a young adult um, contemporary book. When I picked it up, I, like, off my shelves, I somehow thought it was middle grade. I don't know why I thought that. Uh, maybe I confused it with something else, but um, here's a synopsis. This is about a gay teenager named Michael and he discovers drag, but the, the book actually starts when he's really young, so we go through his childhood and then we get to the point where he's a teenager and goes to university, if that makes sense. Um, and this, I love this. Um, this takes place in Britain and um, obviously has LGBT elements, so Michael is gay and he gets into drag. There are other um, LGBT characters in here as well. Hey, this is Gaia Athena in editing and I totally forgot to mention that in The Black Flamingo there are some really good discussions uh, regarding racism and homophobia and that is done in such a good way with such a good message in my opinion um, and like the characters who are acting racist and or homophobic um, I really called out on it and so I thought that was that was excellent there were some really good points made by the book so I just wanted to add that to my uh, thoughts about it back to the original video and yeah this was excellent in, in my opinion so another book in verse that I really enjoyed and, and every now and then I don't know if you can kind of see that but there's like some some black pages and stuff or like a page here with an illustration of these music notes or but here's another well, another part of the book starts so anyway I love this book <laughs> I, I don't know why I should apologize for that but um, I just I usually like most of the things I read um, which was most of the case this month not quite but anyway the next book I finished was The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This was a buddy read with Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures. And we both loved this book. Um, this is about two sisters who live in France uh, during World War II. Vian and Isabelle. Um, they differ a little bit in age. Um, so Vian lives in the French countryside. Isabel and the middle book lives in Paris. Um, then the Second World War breaks out. Fian's husband, Antoine, um, has to, uh, is drafted and has to, you know, be a soldier. And so Fian and her <coughs> young daughter. So the story is kind of told from both of their perspectives, Fian and Isabelle. Isabelle is the younger daughter, the younger sister of Fian, sorry. And she is um, kind of um, like bold and I don't want to say st I don't know if stubborn is the right word but like um, like, like like daring and, and Vian is more um, compliant if that that's maybe not the right word but you know we're talking World War Two and, and Germans here and, and Vian and Isabel are French so um, the, the German invasion in France um, and I thought that was quite nice because I haven't actually read a whole lot of World War II books um, taking place in France during World War II. Now, I have to say, um, I'm not a huge fan of historical fiction. And I'm definitely not a huge fan of like wartime historical fiction um, in terms of what eras I find the most interesting and stuff. That's a personal thing. Um, my partner um, is really interested in World War II um, and specifically the... Um, things like the, the tanks and the planes and vehicles and all that um, so I like listening to him um, but you know reading about is a different thing I was told about obviously from a Dutch perspective since I live in the Netherlands um, so I know more about like the German invasion in the Netherlands and how that 
was and went. Um, I have read some books, um, a few, taking place during World War II, um, but I don't think many of them were from like a French perspective, although I should point out that the author is American, so it's based on research, but the author is American and lives in America, um, so she's not French, if that makes sense. Um, but I really like The Book Thief, which um, is about um, a German girl during World War II, uh, which, which is a different story than this. Sorry, I just, <laughs> just thinking about it. I've had a couple others as well, but anyway, back to The Nightingale. I really um, like this book. The font is quite small, which kind of um, scared me a bit at first, but actually it, it, it just seems small, but there is quite a few, quite a bit of distance between the lines, and it just, it, it, it's a nice read, it intrigued me. The pace is not always like really quick, like it's not like every page is an action page sort of thing, there's also just, just about how the characters uh, live in these difficult times and all of that. Um, Every once in a while, so like here in chapter one, we see um, a timeline in you know, 1995, but most of the book takes place like just before World War II and, and, and during World War II and, and, and after. So yeah, most of it takes place during the war. And yeah, I really, um, I love this book and I really enjoyed buddy reading it with Berna. I think it was a great book to buddy read and talk about. So yeah. Um, I will leave a link to Bernard's channel uh, down below. Um, yeah, this was the end of part five. Um, thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment if you like, and I'll see you soon for part six. Bye!